Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Just want to say hi to everybody. Is everybody starting to get into the room? Please drop, drop us a line in the chat. Let us know where everybody's coming from. Always interested to see where our audience is coming from today. Hollywood, Florida, New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey myself. California, Virginia. You have some Ontario, Canada. See some Tennessee people. Oh, there we go. That's my old stomping grounds. <laughs> California, Minnesota, Illinois, New Hampshire, Colorado, Idaho, Michigan. Go faster, everyone. Let's see if I can read them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. We have uh, Spain and Venezuela popped up. Very cool. Very, very yeah, cool. I'm always looking for the, the farthest place. Norway. Norway. Cool. There we go. Mm -hmm. Some Texas people, my, my neighbors. Argentina. So we're going very far down south. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have a lot of people in here from all around the world today, which is great. So let's say we get started here. So I think everybody, we have a lot of people in here. Oh, it's still filling up. Let's give it another second or two. See if the meter stops. This is a good moment for me to clean my palette, which I didn't do before. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone, we're gonna start. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class, Windsor and Newton, Windsor and Newton's Watercolor Mother's Day Bouquet. My name is Tim DePack, and I'll be your wins I'm from Windsor and Newton, and I'll be your moderator today. And I'm being joined by Shailene Louise, who will be your artist instructor for the class. And she'll be taking you through today's class by providing you some information about the products being used, showing you some of her watercolor painting techniques, and also creating this beautiful Mother's Day bouquet using the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paints. There was a sketch that was provided for you in the link. If not, if you haven't gotten it, I'll put it on the chat on the side for you in a second. And I just like to let everyone know that the class is being recorded and will be available 24 hours after the class has ended. It can be found on michaels.com or to Michael's YouTube channel. And I'll also put the link on the side, on the chat for you as well. With that being said, you may choose to, I'm sorry, you may choose to paint along in the class with Shailene or sit back and relax and watch her create this Mother's Day bouquet and create it while watching the re replay. With that being said, I'm gonna hand it over to Shailene. All right, hello everybody, welcome. So good to see your faces today. Um, so for this class, like Tim mentioned, we're going to be doing a Mother's Day bouquet. And this painting was actually inspired by one that my grandma painted about 20 years ago. It was an oil painting she did. So I kind of did my own take on it. And this is, uh, can you see it? <laughs> this is the, uh, the finished version. This is what we're going to try and work towards today. <laughs> and I also have my sketch here. And that's what we'll be working from. So if we want to switch to overhead view, I'm not sure which camera is pinned, but let's switch to overhead view. And I'm gonna talk you through some supplies and then we can get started. So I'm gonna use a lot of colors today, uh, more than I typically use. So I'll talk you through some colors first. So in this class, I'm using tube paints. These are the Cotman Windsor and Newton watercolor tube paints. Um, so I have them kind of squeezed out onto this palette. So we're going to be using, let's see, we got cadmium red. We're going to use some burnt sienna, <laughs> cadmium yellow, viridian green, yellow ochre, uh, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. So a lot of colors, a lot of mixing today. So I'll try and keep, you know, I'll, I'll try and keep reminding you what colors I'm using. Um, and I'm sure that the, just keep an eye on the chat because Tim and Felicia can let you know as well what colors I'm using. I'm gonna use a mixture of several different brush, um, brush sizes today. I'm using a four, five, and three. Uh, these are all round brushes. These are Windsor & Newton's cotton and round brushes. Okay. Besides that, I just have a paper towel, water, and paper. The paper I have today, I trimmed it down um, 
I believe we did seven by 10 today. It was a seven by 10 sheet. And I have my sketch here and I have a pencil and an eraser. So I'm gonna start by just getting this sketched out. Let's see, I'm trying to keep them both in frame for you. So I like to start by kind of mapping it out loosely before I commit to any hard lines. So I'm gonna start by just notice there's three larger flowers. We have a butterfly, we have some leaves that are kind of growing off to the side, some little daisies. So I'm gonna start with the larger kind of blocks, which are those bigger flowers. And I'm just gonna kind of place those. So we got one there, one here, one here, they're all facing different directions. And I have this branch going off this way with a butterfly on top of it. So just kind of map out where you want your butterfly to be. If you've already sketched this ahead of time, that's awesome. I would encourage you to just grab a piece of paper and practice your, your sketching skills along with me. It's a really good skill to learn if you wanna be a, a good painter. I feel like learning to sketch is really, really important. Um, okay, I have this branch coming down here at the bottom with all these little leaves. I have some daisies here. All right, so let's start committing. So I'm gonna start, start by drawing this flower here at the top. So I'm working on this one right here. So I like to start by the cent uh, drawing the center. So I'm just drawing this kind of little mountain shape, little hill. And then I'm gonna draw some petals. I'm not overthinking this at all. In fact, when I first painted this, I did not sketch it out first, which is really rare for me. I usually live by my sketches, but for this one, I actually just did it freehand. But I like to always have a sketch available for you, so. All right, so I got these petals that are just kind of normal looking, and then we have some petals that are curling in towards the flower. So we kind of have that wavy line, another mm -hmm. wavy line. Okay, so there's my first flower. Let's keep on working. I'll, I'll go kind of counterclockwise here. So I have this other stamen. Let's go ahead and draw that center and then draw some petals. Kind of have them overlapping each other. Like I said, the, they don't need to be perfect. In fact, I feel like the less perfect they are, the better this is gonna end up looking. We don't need to overthink this one. And this one has the same shape as that one up there. It's facing away. So we kind of have this petal that's folding over towards the left. All right, and last flower, this one here. And let's draw some petals at the bottom. And Felicia, would you mind making sure that everybody's muted? I'm definitely hearing some background noise here. Okay, so finished my flowers. Let me hold that up for you just for a second there. All right, so let's go ahead and do Let's go ahead and draw these little daisies. So start by just drawing the center stamen. And then these petals are so easy. <laughs> we just draw equal petals going up in every direction. So we want all of our, our uh, <laughs> daisy petals, they're all equal. Does that make sense?
Shailene, maybe you want to tell people why you chose that particular orientation of the, the flowers as the typical where you would have the stems coming from the bottom this way, it's on the, the landscape mode. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is because I used a painting that my grandma did. And so that was kind of the orientation of hers. And so this is kind of a tribute painting to her. And at the end, if, if I get a chance, I can show you guys her painting. You'll love it. It's here hanging on my wall. But she was an amazing oil painter. So she definitely inspired me to start painting. So this is a little, yeah, grandmother's day <laughs> bouquet to me. Okay, so I'm going to start working on some leaves here. So let's go ahead and draw some leaves just behind these flowers. Keep them super wavy. They don't need to be perfect looking. Kind of want mine to be a little bit. Uh, yeah, just, just imperfect, you know, I want it to be kind of ruffled looking. See how I did that? And I'm going to go ahead and paint, uh, draw these, these little, these little flowers or these little leaves here. So coming off of this branch, let's just draw some little leaves that are kind of going off to the right and to the left. Um, I usually do pretty, pretty heavily detailed paintings in my classes. This one's going to be maybe one of the less detailed ones, and it'll it'll still have detail absolutely. And you're still going to use we're still going to use a lot of the techniques that I that I use regularly. But this is going to be a little bit more of a loose painting, which is fun because I just feel like there's not quite as much pressure. It's a little more fun, a little more relaxed. I love to paint detailed paintings, but Sometimes my brain just needs a little, little break. I was telling Felicia and Tim before we started that I've got a serious case of a pregnancy brain today. <laughs> so go easy on me if I forget some terms. All right, I'm gonna draw another stem going off over here. Actually, let's draw a leaf back here behind that flower. We'll draw a leaf back here on this branch where the butterfly is hanging out. Another little branch that's growing off. And I think I'm actually going to, if you've already sketched it out, all good. That is, that is, you're awesome. I'm actually gonna wait and I'm gonna paint these without a sketch later, all these little branches and stems that are going off to the right side. So I think that's a probably a pretty good place to get started. Let me just hold that up for you so you can get a good look at it. Something else I like to do after I, because you know how I did those kind of loose placements earlier, just where I was just drawing the circles. I kind of like to erase those just because I find that the less pencil markings there are on my paper, the better, and the better chance I have of <laughs> erasing it all. Less pencil markings, the better. Sometimes people ask me why I don't use colored pencils or like watercolor pencils. Um, and I find that those, as soon as you bring water to watercolor pencils, um, it just kind of smudges my lines and I need my lines to remain intact. So I pretty much have to use a, like a real pencil. And usually I'm able to erase it pretty well. So, okay, so let's get started. I'm going to pull my sketch out of frame. Um, if you still need it, you have a sketch that you should have got when you signed up for the class. So take all the time you need and the class is going to be available to watch again later. So just move at whatever pace you feel comfortable with. So I got my water here and I got my brushes and I have a paper towel. So let's see here, I'm gonna get started with some color mixing. I think I'm gonna start with this top flower here and that one is going to be yellow. So let's see here, let's start with, 
I'm going to get some cadmium yellow mixed here. And I'm going to do just like a tiny bit of cadmium red. And I'm just going to orange it up a little bit. So it's going to be very, very warm yellow. And I'm using my larger brush. This is the size five round brush. And then I'm just going to take that over to the top flower. And I'm just going to paint all of those petals. And not only the petals, I'm actually going to paint the stamen, so that center area, that color as well. Use a large brush for this part because we are going to be covering a lot of space quickly. And so whenever you're covering a lot of space, a lot of paper really quickly, you want to use your larger brush. And you also want to make sure you're, you have a lot of water in your brush. And that color is going to distribute really nicely. It's going to flow really well. And while we're here, let's go ahead and use that same color and drop it on the center of your other two flowers. So just at the stamen area. And this, this painting that I told you I, re I referenced from my grandma, I actually don't even know what these flowers are. I thought they kind of looked like anemones, but, or maybe they look like wild roses, but they can be whatever flower you think they are. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Based on the leaves, I would say they have more of a rose look, but, I do not know. Maybe hollyhock. We just know they make a beautiful bouquet when it's all done. That's the most important part. That's Pretty true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm grabbing some yellow ochre. And I'm going to add some yellow ochre to this mixture here. And, and yellow ochre is just kind of a desaturated yellow. A little warmer, a little darker. And... I basically just want a variety of colors. I don't want to just use the same color over and over. I kind of want to have a nice mix, even if I'm even if I'm painting a lot of colors that are in the same family. I just like to find different shades. So I'm going to use this mixture of there's uh, cadmium yellow and yellow ochre, and I'm going to paint all of my little daisy um, petals. <laughs> And I'm just pressing down and I'm kind of lifting my brush to the point. So press down, lift, press down, kind of lift it. Or you can, and let me pull this down for you just a bit so you can really see this technique. You can go lightly and then press down a bit more. So start light and then press down. It's actually great the way that's laying down. It's the, the shape of the brush that is actually allowing you to do that correctly. That's, that's really mm -hmm. unique on that. It's awesome. That, that, that's why I like the round brushes. You can really get a lot of different techniques out of just this one brush. Like it has, it holds a ton of paint in those bristles, especially when you press down, but then it also has a very fine tip. So these are definitely my go-to for watercolor brushes. I don't really use any other sizes besides round brushes. I think I have some other ones, like I have a filbert and a couple other mop brushes, but yeah, I love, I love the round brushes. So I'm just going around these daisies. Something that's kind of cool that I like about this is that as I am dropping this color, I'm starting to lose pigments. So some petals end up being a little bit lighter than the neighbors and some are darker and I think that's cool because it gives it a little bit of variegation and inconsistency and as I mentioned this is, I want this to be a little bit of a lighter or looser painting not quite as detailed as my normal ones
And that mixture again, that's yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it looks a lot duller on Zoom than it does in real life. It's pretty bright, but that's okay. I'm sure that yours at home looks super vibrant, so you understand. Okay, so let me pull that back up for a minute. I just wanna make sure you can see my palette as well as my painting, but if it's easier for you to see the painting, I can keep it zoomed in, or I can just kind of keep holding it up for you to the, holding it up to the camera for you. Whatever works better. All right, what am I gonna do next? Let's, uh, let's go down to this red flower. So I'm going to do a mixture here of Alizarin Crimson, which is my favorite pink color. So get a lot of Alizarin Crimson mixed. Let's get that little puddle going. So I'm just activating that color, which is dried on my palette with some water. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna grab some cadmium yellow, which I actually have a little bit right here. So cadmium yellow, and alizarin crimson, but mostly alizarin crimson. So think like maybe like 70% alizarin crimson, 30% um, cadmium yellow. And I just want it to be a little bit more of a peachy pink instead of a bright pink. Just keeps our colors super warm. Yellow is kind of our, our base color for this painting. We're going to use a lot of yellow today. Okay, so then use this mixture. And we're going to do the same technique we did up here on this flower and just go ahead and go ahead and cover your pink flower. I'm still using my larger brush. So this is the size five brush. This is a pretty watery mixture, lots of water. So it's pretty transparent or translucent, a very light peachy pink color. As you're painting that on, just gonna let everybody know that the class is being recorded and 24 hours after the class concludes, you can go onto the michaels.com or the YouTube channel, Michael's YouTube channel and review this video. Okay, so I'm going to go in with that same mixture, just adding a little bit more cadmium yellow to my puddle here. So more of a 50-50 mixture, cadmium yellow and a lizard and crimson, and it's gonna give you this beautiful peach color. And let's paint our butterfly. So starting by painting his back wing and then this top wing. Then I have another little wing popping out behind that one. There you go. Easy enough, huh? Okay, we'll let that dry. And let's start painting some leaves. So we'll start getting the mixture ready for our leaves. I'm going to turn my palette because I want you to see this side of it now. So I'm gonna get a mixture of burnt sienna and viridian green. That's gonna be our green color today. So we're gonna do some mixing. So Viridian Green, pulling over a bunch of color here. And then I'm gonna use a pretty equal amount of Burnt Sienna, which is this beautiful kind of rusty brown color. One of my favorite colors. 
And let's mix those two and it's gonna create a warmer green, more of a forest mossy green color. This is one of my favorite color combos for, for green. So Viridian green and burnt sienna. Make sure there's a lot of water here. It's gonna help mix those two colors together really nicely. And using my same brush, I promise I'll use other brushes later, but <laughs> the size five brush is my, is my MVP today. All right, and then once that color feels like the right consistency, it's the right shade, let's come over to our painting. I'm going to start, where am I gonna start? I'm gonna start over here. And I do want this to be a, a little more on the watery side. Go ahead and just paint all these leaves. Keeping it loose today. What were those last two colors again? Viridian green with the alizarin crimson, right? Uh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, sorry. Mm -hmm. Although alizarin crimson and viridian green would probably make a really cool green color too. Endless options. So I'm keeping these super light so there's, it's very watery. I'm gonna come back and layer more dark color later. But for my first layer, I just like to keep things a little bit lighter. If you've taken any classes with me before, you know I like to layer paint to build dimension and form and depth. I like to do that slowly. All right, avoid these leaves right here that are just underneath. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna paint those later. But let's paint actually a little leaf underneath this red flower, which I didn't actually even sketch that out, but look at me, I can still paint even without a sketch. <laughs> and a couple more, let's do these leaves up top. A little bit dark, so I just blotted it in the color a little. Uh, I just blotted my brush in the water to get rid of a little bit of excess color. And now I'm going to actually paint just uh, in uh, inside of here, in between all these flowers. I'm going to just paint a green flower. Let's say there's a green flower growing off this white flower in the back. And I'm going to draw a stem. I'm going to just draw these stems. So this is the part where I want you to feel confident here, but I want you to just go ahead and drawing behind these flowers. Just go ahead and start drawing some, some stems. So we kind of want some different thicknesses. And if you need to just watch me do this and do it later, that's totally fine. But let's just start laying some, some flower stems here. I want some of them to be thicker than others. And maybe here we can actually, we can switch to our smaller brush. I'm gonna switch to my size four because this is a little more of a detailed part of our painting. So you'll feel like you have a little more control if you use a smaller brush. We want one stem to be coming out from behind this daisy. Let's see. I'm going to draw a dark stem right over that leaf. See, I'm layering some of this paint. It's the same exact color, viridian green and burnt sienna but I'm able to layer it and make certain parts of it a little darker. Okay. 
And let's go ahead and draw some little tiny leaves growing off of some of your, some of your stems. It's gonna feel really nice if you have some of these stems and some of these leaves a little bit lighter than others. We want there to be that variegation, kind of dark and light mixture of colors. Let me hold that up for you. Looks beautiful so far. And just let you know, we're about halfway through. We're 30 minutes past the hour. Cool. We'll draw a couple more leaves back here. I like to have a little bit of, I like to have some green detail. Keeps it just feeling a little more interesting. Okay, so I want you to notice something that we did just um, <laughs> that made this painting a lot easier for us. This white flower pops out, right? Because it's surrounded by dark, darker color. So that just made our job painting that white flower super easy. So let's go ahead and just add a little bit more definition to it. And I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of cadmium red which is a little bit out of frame, but I'm just gonna grab that and pull it over here. And it's gonna create kind of this grayish blue color, but I'm gonna use just the tiniest bit of this mixture. I'm mostly gonna use water. I have just the tiniest bit of pigment here. Very, very, very watery. And so this is cadmium red and ultramarine blue and 90% water, okay? So then I'm going to take that mixture. And if you do this, if you go too dark, just grab a paper towel and lift it right off. And try again. And I'm just gonna start kind of towards the center and drop some color, pull it up and towards the rest of the petals, kind of reaching upward. And let's paint on the back side of this petal as well. And this is gonna help us create a little bit of form, kind of make that petal look a little bit more round. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna rinse that brush off blot it so I have a, just a damp clean brush size four and I'm just going to smooth out a few of those lines and then a damp clean brush doing that is adding the dimension to that flower you can see it mm -hmm. so it just cool. feels like it has a lot more dimension to it it feels like there's some roundness to this back petal. It looks like this inner part is just in shadow just a little bit. And there you have it. Okay, so let's go back to our butterfly. And I'm going to use the same mixture of color that I did earlier. So it's a lizard and crimson and a little bit of, uh, what was I using? Uh, cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna use an even stronger mixture of those two colors. And I'm gonna start by just doing some little dots along the back edge of these wings. I'm gonna do like little, maybe like four dots or five dots on each wing, just at the top here. And then using maybe even a little bit of a lighter mixture of color. Let's draw some lines that are reaching down
I'm going to pull this down a little bit for you. And just add a little bit more color to those dots because I kind of pulled out a lot of that color as I drew those lines down. So I'm adding just a little more color to those tips. And there you have it. Okay, so what's next? Let's do, I'm kind of always trying to think like, what area should I paint next so I won't disrupt any of the wet paint. Uh, let's go ahead and paint these orange leaves. I'm going to, my palette is a little messy right now, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, just pure burnt sienna. And I'm going to show you my palette here. So I'm using my size four brush. So I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, which is that rusty color I told you I love, and a little bit of cadmium red. So just find a clear spot to mix these two colors together. And it's gonna create a very lovely rusty red brown color, kind of a fall tone. And then I'm going to paint all of these little leaves that color. And I want you to just keep on going until some of that paint, you're starting to lose some of the paint and the color gets really light. Then you come back and grab a little more paint. Mine is getting a little dry, so I have to add a little bit of water to it. Once again, that round brush is giving you perfect curves as you're laying down those leaves. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm able to do that. These look, look what I'm doing right now. I'm doing these really fine, uh, these fine lines for the stem, but I'm also able to press that brush down and really lay out some of that color. That's a great thing about round brushes because they're, they're so multi-purpose as you're using them. You went from a thin line to thick coverage on there. It's a great, mm -hmm. great brush to use, shaped brush too. I'm going to drop just a little bit more dark, this dark mixture into some of the, maybe just some of the tips of these leaves while the, um, while the leaves are still wet. And you'll find that the water in, the, in those leaves is just going to take it and kind of pull it. Okay. Let's go ahead and use that same mixture, but maybe just a little heavier on the burnt sienna side. In fact, if you want, you can just use pure burnt sienna for this part. But let's paint the center stamen of our daisies. Just using the tip of that brush. Okay. And let's do, let's see, let's do a mixture of alizarin crimson, or not alizarin crimson, um, burnt sienna with a tiny bit of that viridian green. So that the mixture we are using for our leaves and our, our stems, let's use that color. So I want this to be a brown tone. And I'm gonna paint this little, this little guy's this little guy's body. So using just the tip of the size four brush, let's just paint a line there for his body. And then I'm going to use my smaller brush, the size three, because it has a smaller point. And I'm going to give him his little antenna, little antennas, and his little, his little arms. I don't know how many, 
How many arms and legs do butterflies have? Is it six or eight? I think, I think I'm just going to give I'm not sure as well, but I'm sure so, yeah, everybody in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew someone would know. Six? <laughs> Is it six? Okay, okay. We have six, yeah. Are you sure it's not I'm five? going with six. That's what people are saying right now. Insects have six. Arachnids have eight from Lauren Clark. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, there you go. Thank you. I love it. So wealth of knowledge in this group. Okay, so I'm going to use that same brush, the size six, or sorry, size <laughs> six is on the brain, but I'm going to use the size three brush and using the same little puddle of color here. So that's burnt sienna and a lizard crimson. So it's going to be kind of a brownish tone, brownish green. And let's go ahead and paint our little branches that are growing off this. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit because I'm having a hard time. Um, my <laughs> My uh, paintbrush wants to hit the camera, so don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these branches, and I'm just going to kind of keep it loose, keep your wrist relaxed. Use the smallest brush you have because we want those to be very, very wispy little branches that are growing off. And our butterfly is, is chilling out on that branch there. Same thing up here. I'm just gonna follow the sketch lines I drew earlier. I'll go down here, just underneath my pink flower. Use a small brush and make sure that your mixture is not too watery. If you have too much water in your bristles, you might find that it's difficult to draw those really, really thin wispy lines. So this is called a dry brush technique. So it's just very, very little water. So you would suggest for them to slowly, slowly do this and then add water as needed then, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you want it just enough water so that paint moves <laughs> on your palette, okay? So very, very little water. Um, I'll do just a little more back here. Let's do an extra one there. And one up here. Okay, so I'm going to use the same mixture of color. So burnt sienna, viridian green, but heavy, heavy, heavy on the burnt sienna side. I want a dark brown color here. Burnt sienna with a tiny bit of viridian green. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint our stamen, so our center of our flowers. And I want you to just draw some little dots. I don't want you to completely cover the yellow that we have. I want there to be a little bit of that light yellow shining through with this brown color on top of it. And I'm using my size three brush here. This is my favorite part of the process is when I can start adding some final details. Just gonna let everybody know, once again, the uh, the class is being recorded. So in 24 hours, you can go back on to michaels.com or the YouTube channel to replay this, this video again, just in case you, you're falling behind a little bit and you wanna go back and replay on this at your convenience. I'm gonna put the links in the chat on the side for you. And I always really, really love when you guys share your, your paintings on social media. Um, we ask that if you guys will share it, like just use these hashtags and be sure to tag us. And if you enjoy taking classes from me, be sure to get on my newsletter there at shalinelouise.com slash subscribe. And I'll keep you in the loop about any future classes I'm teaching. And you can also know just if you follow me on social media, I'm usually pretty good at letting people know. Okay, so I think we are really in the home stretch here. I'm going to add a little bit more detail to my flowers. 
we just did one layer. So I'm gonna come back to this yellow flower and using that mixture of cadmium yellow and cadmium red, so the two cadmium colors, I'm mixing a very beautiful kind of rusty yellowish red orange color. And I'm gonna use my larger brush. I'm gonna use the size four. And I'm gonna just add a little bit of a, that color to these leaves. And then you can use another clean brush to just smooth that color up into the rest of the petal. We're keeping it super loose today. It does not need to be perfect. We kind of, I'm kind of enjoying these, these lines. I don't want it to be super, super smooth. And we'll drop, like we did over here on the white flower, uh, drop some dark color onto the back side of this flower, just along this edge that I drew earlier. And then using my other brush, clean and damp, just going to soften the, those lines just a little bit. Doesn't that make it feel a lot more interesting than it did? It has a lot more dimension now. And I'm going to do that same technique for this pink flower. So the mixture for our pink flower was alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow. So I'm just reactivating that color on my palette here. So then using that darker color, it's like kind of a darker mix. It's the same two colors, but just a little bit more pigment. So dropping it in the same spots that I did for the yellow flower but it's upside down. So along the top. Just on the inside. Kind of want it to look like these flowers are folding over each other, like there's some shadows. And then using my clean damp brush, blotting it off here. I'm gonna smooth out some of those lines, pull out that color into the rest of the petals just a bit. There you have it, it already feels a little more, like it has a little more dimension. And I'll do the same thing for my darker white flower, just a little bit, not too much. So that's, uh, that mixture is ultramarine blue with a little bit of cadmium red. Okay, and so now this is the last detail I'm going to do for this painting. Let me just pull this up real quick. Just get a shot of everything. Okay, so I'm going to use that mixture of green that I've been using so much today. So Viridian Green, burnt sienna. Let's get a dark mixture of those two colors going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on half of each of these leaves okay so I kind of want to accentuate this the center vein so I'm just going to kind of make one side of each leaf just a little bit darker so I'm just painting just to the right or the left of that center vein if that makes sense and then I'm using a damp brush and I'll kind of smooth out some of that color maybe you want to drop a little bit of that dark color on the outer edge So drop some color, just so this for this leaf, I'm drawing just to the right. And then I'm smoothing it out. So that these leaves don't feel so flat. I think that these leaves are all feeling a little bit flat. They need a little bit more dimension. So using that dark mixture of Viridian Green and Burnt Sienna, which is the original color I laid down to begin with, Layering that on with just a darker layer of color is helping bring out some of that, that drama. I'm 
And after we do this, after, after you do this, I should say, I want you to wait, give your painting, after you're completely done painting, give it maybe 15, 20 minutes, wait for your painting to be totally dry, and then you can erase all of the pencil markings. But wait till your painting is totally dry before you do that. Just so everybody knows, um, Shailene went over that probably when she was drawing the, the sketching it out a little bit darker so everyone can see it on the screen. I would imagine as you're doing this at home that you'd wanna go a little bit lighter so you don't have any types of marks that you're leaving in your watercolor paper and it would make it that much easier for you to erase mm -hmm. them at the end as well. Mm -hmm. I actually typically use an F pencil at home for my sketches. Um, for this class, I just use like a basic click pencil which is very dark. Um, but yeah, if you want to invest in um, a pencil with a harder um, lead or <laughs> whatever that center part is, um, when it's a harder pencil, it works a lot better. But F pencils are my favorite. So I just highly recommend using those. They're the best for erasing um, afterwards. I'm just gonna make that little leaf real dark. All right, now I'm just, I'm doing the part of the painting where I just kind of look over it, see if there's any other details I want to add. I think, I think I'm good. So what I'm going to do now is just, everybody close your eyes for one second. <laughs> and ta-da, there is the painting I did a couple of days ago with all of the pencil markings erased. So this is how it'll look after all those kind of sketchy lines are all gone. So there you have it. It's a little bit more of a loose painting. Um, I want to do two things. First, I want to, I'm going to show you guys my grandma's painting because I just feel like you should see it and we got a little bit of extra time. So let me grab that real quick. As she's going to get that, just want to remind everybody that if you want to share your finished pieces of work with us, we really encourage you to do it. I'm going to post some some hashtags on the side, uh, make it with Michael's, make it with Michael's art, Michael's classes, Windsor Newton, and some other links on the chat over here. We'd love to see the work that you're, you're doing and creating alongside with Shailene. And I'm also going to give you some ways that you can connect with her and you can find out some more information about her as well as her upcoming classes. And if you have any questions while you're going in and watching the replays on the YouTube channel, the Michael's channel on there, it would be great she's there to, to help you and she always encourages and she loves to chat with her fans out there. Definitely do. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys my grandma's painting and this is my absolute favorite painting of hers. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it so much. Uh, so I think she painted this when I was just a little kid and this is an oil painting that she did. She didn't do very many florals. She mostly did um, like New Mexico landscape. She did a lot of Pueblo paintings and mountains, but this is the one floral piece she did that I just, I had to have it. So that's hanging on my wall. And here's my little watercolor tribute to her. So I would love before we finished, finish here, let's, uh, let's all hold up our paintings and I'll switch to gallery view so I can see everybody's paintings. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love how some of them look just so different. And I think that's kind of what happens when we do a more loose style of painting. These are They're so beautiful. I want to take a look at it too. They look great. Wow. Dang. Those are gorgeous. One more second, everyone. I want to get one more look at some of the other pages there. There's so many people. I know Great. it takes a, it takes a minute to get through all of these. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous, so gorgeous. Thank you for sharing. All right. So just as a friendly reminder for those of you that are watching there in 24 hours, a replay will be available that you can watch on the Michael's website or through the YouTube channel. Just give it 24 hours. Uh, also, there will be an email sent to you for a survey after the class. Please give us high ratings for both myself and Shailene. <laughs> we love working along with everyone and, and great work again, Shailene. I, I love it. It's, it's beautiful. Hopefully everybody else loves it as well. It's something great to, to give as a gift right for, for Mother's Day. So mm -hmm. very yeah. beautiful work.
Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, and we're doing another class on Tuesday. So be sure to sign up for that one. We're going to do a peony and that's going to be a super fun painting. Do you have a thanks. preview of that one, Shilly? I do. Can you guys give me a, give me a 10 seconds, five seconds. I'm going to get the link for everyone real quick as well for that. I do. Yep. I found it fast. Okay. So this is in my sketchbook here. So this is the painting we're going to be doing next week. And this is from one of my sketchbook flowers I did last fall. It's going to be really fun. Um, I think that's going to be a perfect class for, for one hour. So Felicia, do you have the link for that that you can share with everybody in the chat quickly? Uh, let starting? me take a look for you. Okay, I'm looking as well real quick. And the date for that, what is the date for that one? Is that the... That should be, that will be 5 11. 12? 11th, okay. 5 11. Next, that will be next Tuesday. Cool. I just want to give everybody the link. Here we go. And that would be for the peony. So there is the link in the chat for the next one upcoming next week. Encourage everyone to join us next week again, same time, same place. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm very excited. All right, okay. everybody, thanks so much. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure. Bye, everybody.